Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno. As we bring you something completely different here at the 56th BFI London Film Festival, a liar's autobiography in 3D. But they just they just follow me around everywhere I go. Oh, it's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. Oh, it's such a shame. So, so tell us and reminisce with us as this is what we're doing this evening about your experience working with the Python. Well, it was pretty boring. <laughs> And if you believe that, believe anything, uh, far from boring, of course. Um, I was a very lucky girl because when I came along to join them, I was only supposed to be in four episodes. I hadn't met the guys before. Um, I was very confused the first time I went to the first, uh, first episode of the series. And it was thanks to them that they decided they liked me, that I was not only sort of pretty, but I could be funny and talented. And it's thanks to them that we're, I'm here now, tonight, with these two gorgeous hunks, I, whoever they are. Um, and it was just a wonderful experience. And I'm a very lucky lady, lots of fun and lovely memories of Graham. And the fact that he's here tonight, you know, he is here because, I mean, he, he narrates this film. You know, it's like uh, he's alive and he's here and it's great. What was, what was your experience? Because obviously this is a celebration of, of Graham's life really, isn't it? It is, it is, and it should be. Uh, and it's lovely we're doing it now. You know, I mean, there was the, the wonderful, you know, eulogy when he died, which everyone remembers the drive in. And that was great. But now here we are all these years later and remembering Graham again, as it should be. Uh, and it's lovely because the book is, is great fun and to see it up in the big screen in this animated form. Uh, I mean, it's a wonderful concept, 3D animation. I'm, it's a new, another step for Python. I mean, you think it's over. You think like, the Pythons can't go any further. What are they going to do? The spam a lot. What are they going to do now? And now we have 3D animation. Well, the, the interesting thing is that the Python doesn't date because humour really doesn't date. And it has a very unique sense of humour, doesn't it? It will. Python humour will never date. Uh, I go to these conventions here and there and sit and sign photographs and things. And, I, and there's now children 11 years old coming up, third generation Python fans. They've just discovered Python. It will never end. It will go on forever. And was, it, what, was it funny for you working on set with these people, take after take? Does it still remain funny for you? It always remains funny for me. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm, yes, it's a joy. And everything we do, I mean, like for three years ago for the 40th anniversary, we were on stage at the Royal Albert Hall, and we had a wonderful laugh. I mean, every time I see them, and I don't see them that regularly, but when I do, it's like, well, it was like, it's like yesterday, and like today, it's like yesterday, uh, and it goes on. I mean, I can't wait for the next Python event. There will be one, for sure. Well, yes. congratulations this evening, right, because we are actually celebrating Graham Chapman's life, aren't we, with we this are. film? Yes. Can yes. you tell us a little more about that? Well, it's wonderful to see all these people arriving to celebrate Graham Chapman's life. I think the other Python, some of whom are here tonight, Michael Palin and Terry Jones, they all had a life beyond Python. And sadly, because he died young, Graham Chapman didn't really get that extra bite of the cherry that the others have had. So it's just wonderful that people are coming to remember him and celebrate him, but in, in Graham's way, with his writing and his humour. It's his voice who drives the, drives the film, and he plays himself in the film. So it's, it's kind of fantastic to have brought him back Back to life in that way. And was it yourself, Jeff, that had found the tapes of Graham? Yes, I was told that these tapes exist. It took me a while to find them. Graham recorded these tapes, these the tapes of his autobiography, as a kind of early audio book. He recorded two and a half hours of material. Once I'd found them and listened to them, I realised that there were a lot of scenes and dialogue that, that we could actually use to have him play themselves, play himself. But then when I took it into to Bill and Ben, or Bill and Ben, <laughs> uh, then we realised that we could actually make it into a proper film. Yes. And 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 what it, and, and with the use of animation, which obviously obviously is synonymous with the Python films, what is it about animation that gives an extra freedom of expression to help tell this story, really? Well, I think the. The big problem we had with this film was that the star was actually dead, so we only had his voice. So uh, there wasn't really much of a chance that we could uh, redo it. I suppose we could have got actors together and got different actors to play different parts, but the here, the sheer sort of um, change where oh, the sheer tangents that he goes on is just so bizarre and strange and odd that to really give it do justice to the story, 
you need the animations to be able to do that. I mean, we, we've got a World War II battle scene. We've got two scenes in space with spaceships. That would have been a bit difficult to film in live action, but thankfully with animation, you can actually do anything you want or anything Graham wanted. And, and also the, another thing with the, with the pythons, of course, is humour. So how important was it to keep the essence of what is Python-esque humour, really? Well, I mean, really, we're fo we're, it was very important, but we're following Graham's words and, and Graham, the way he wrote it. I mean, it's strange. A lot of, a lot of what he did was very witty at times. It was witticisms in the book upon witticisms. But then in the scenes that he built, it was really nice to then build with the animators and with us to build some little humour on top of that. But it isn't an out-and-out -out comedy. It's not, it's not a comedy film. It's, I don't know what it is, but it's not... <laughs> The red carpet for my son. Yeah, I mean, I'm well, I'm very impressed. <laughs> Is it nice for you that, that your your son does want to carry on the, the family legacy and and continue and spread the word of the Python world? Yeah, no, no, it's 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 wonderful. I mean, I mean, I hope he'll do some other things <laughs> apart from Python, but um, uh, but, but he, yeah, no, the the it's a it's a it's a wonderful film actually. Yes. Yeah, so. And, and it's obviously celebrating Graham's life. Has it been moving for you to, to go back and, and revisit a, who was a close friend? Uh, yeah, well, I, I don't know he was a close friend, really. I, I mean, he was always uh, first off out uh, uh, haunting gay bars and things like that. So, uh, so I, I didn't really, I don't feel I ever really knew Graham. I, and I think possibly he didn't know himself um, and I think he was always in search of who he was and uh, um, and you know the fact he became an alcoholic and then was became a non-alcoholic um, uh, and then he announced himself as gay but David Sherlock said that he was convinced that he would actually have gone he, he would have actually was going straight in, in the end uh, um, and uh, uh, so I think he was in search of himself. How are you feeling this evening and revisiting the old Python days and, and one of your old work chums? Oh, well, that's great. I, I, I like the film. It's a kind of very interesting and quite inventive and quite adventurous film. It's quite a risk getting 17 different animators together to do all this stuff. And, um, you know, I, I think it's true to Graham, who was quite liked to go out on a limb, liked to take risks. And I think it's a very good um, tribute to him, really. A nice legacy he's left. And it's his story because he recorded the, the book, which he wrote, A Liar's Autobiography. He recorded this in Los Angeles. So basically, you hear him talking and describing what's going on. So it's rather like having him back with us. And I, I do miss the old bugger. I was going to say, how does that affect you after all these years? Well, it, quite a bit, actually, when I watch it. Because I hear his voice, it's just like he's round the corner. And there are many things about Gray that are, you know, no one else supplied. He had a, a kind of odd view of life and would come up with amazing sort of strange bits of surreal comedy and humour and all that. And um, uh, no one else quite does that. So I, I kind of feel I want to turn to him and get his take on, you know, John Cleese's fourth marriage or whatever. You know, it would always be interesting. And you've lent your voice in the film. So what was it like going back for you personally and, and, and being a part of the Pythons again? Oh, well, I mean, I worked with Terry quite a lot. And I see the two Terrys. And we were in a recording studio, myself and Terry and Terry Gilliam. And uh, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, very good. We all like doing funny voices. And uh, it was in a good cause. And sharing creative energies. Oh, oh yes, oh, yes. So they say. Thank you, Michael. It's changing creative juices, I think. Yep. <laughs>